All right, shares of Porsche in focus after the company priced the top end of their range, valuing the automaker at roughly 75 billion euros, making this one of the biggest public offerings in Europe history. Uh, and this one had all the writing on the wall of being well received by the market, despite this uh, ongoing pressure in broader markets. A couple bullet points that checks off first. You have Porsche uh, making a strong push into electric vehicles. They own a, a 10 per state, uh, 10 percent stake in a supercar electric maker, Rimac. So uh, market likes seeing that as well. And also sales through the first half of this year up eight and a half percent. Operating profits up close to 25 percent. So a lot of things to like outside of the fact this is Porsche. Yeah. Well, we were talking about Lucid just the other day and how similar to retail or at least analogous with it, uh, analogous, excuse me, with it, where you have some of the higher ends of certain markets, especially as it relates to the higher end consumer that are still performing well or at least holding up better than uh, middle tier or even kind of low income portions of the market where you would see some of those dollars being put to work uh, on a consumer discretionary fashion. Porsche, of course, at the high end of the market, it's going to be interesting to see how they hold up in terms of some of their car sales going forward from here because, yeah, as much as it is something to be able to get around in a luxury fashion, it's still also something that is going to perceivably carry more value over time than if I were to get into, I don't know, a Subawoo at this point. Subawoo. Subawoo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Inside joke, ladies and germs. Um, it's interesting that Porsche is now down so much on the day. It did open higher and there seemed to be some early enthusiasm for this and now we are seeing that tumble, not sure what the catalyst would that for that would be, um, but yeah. you know there was some the some early optimism in there. Yeah, it is quite the reversal. Reversal was up something like um, two percent earlier in the session. So not sure exactly what's going on here. Yeah, it was interesting too. I'll just quickly mention here. Uh, you had a good note out of I believe it was Morgan Stanley yesterday on Ferrari calling that name recession proof. Now, if Ferrari's recession proof, I, Porsche has to be right there, Brad. Almost. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we're looking at this day one action, too, and, and one of the critical things that this also kind of points back to is what we were talking about earlier this week with some of the um, the shifts in the IPO market and the data that even Goldman Sachs and their research had put out really pointing out that the IPO market has dried up. Companies are looking for any opportunity if they need to get out the door to not just woo the investors on day one, but to also make sure that they can shore up capital regardless of the day one reaction that is going to allow them to weather this near term economic downturn as well. And so for Porsche, it just spells out that, yes, the capital was needed regardless of what the market or what the valuation is looking like even after this IPO has made it out the door. It's a larger question of how they're going to use this cash, put it to work and be able to then navigate what the rest of the companies in the automotive landscape are navigating as well. Everything from employment all the way to getting the necessary chips and on Porsche's side, retaining the mind share of the high end luxury consumer, too.